our intervention. But those were just a couple of examples of manuscripts that have that have displayed the results in tables. And those tables were of the type that we described. The first one, table one, describing the individuals in the study, showing how comparable the groups were. Table two, showing crude association. Table three, in the Palmer study, showing adjusted association. And a later table showing other analyses we might do. So keep that in mind whenever you try to design a study and anticipate the analysis you're going to do, start by thinking about what tables you're going to be showing to your, to your readers. And typically, they're of the order of the type that we've seen in each of these two studies. So let's talk something about statistics now. Let me today give you an overview of statistics. Uh, first, I'll talk about descriptive statistics, and then we'll talk about inference using analytical statistics. So descriptive statistics is just describing characteristics of the people in your study. So for example, let's suppose uh, you look at people from the Framingham Heart Study. Uh, the Framingham Heart Study has about 5,000 people who were initially enrolled in it. I had access to a data set which included a subset of 1,363 people who were free of coronary heart disease back in 1950 when the study began. And I had their blood pressures. And let's suppose you just want to describe those blood pressures to a bunch of readers. This was a study you were doing to look at the relationship between blood pressure in 1950 and the person's risk of developing heart disease in the future. And what you want to do is you want to describe those 1,360 people to your reader. The first thing you want to do is just describe your blood pressure. They have high blood pressures, they have low blood pressures. What's the distribution of blood pressures? What are some summary values that describe blood pressures? There are two ways of describing data. There are graphical displays, which are pictures, things like histograms, cumulative distribution functions, stem and leak plots, etc. And more often, there are numerical summaries, things like averages, standard deviations. And that's what was used in the table ones that we saw in the two previous examples, numerical summaries. But let me just show you some graphical displays. The most common graphical display is a histogram. You take the 1,363 people, you break them into groups groups that are defined by ranges of blood pressure, say under 100, 100 to 110, maybe 110 to 130. Each of these bars here is centered above a group, a blood pressure range. And the height of the bar is nothing more than the frequency, the number of people who fell into the group. You could divide these frequencies by the number 1,363, the total number of people in the study. And now the height of the bars would be the proportion of people who fall into those. So what a histogram is giving you is an idea of the distribution of those blood pressures among the 1,363 people. You'll see that most of the blood pressures are around 120 to 130. There's some in the high teens, there's some in the 40, 140s, 150s, and 60s, but most of them are in the high normal, low hypertension range, around 120 to 160. Range. But notice there are some people, this tail that shows there's some people with very, very high blood pressure. This might what be what you'd expect, a distribution that's skewed, as the statisticians say, with a few people with atypically large values. And that's important when you decide how you're going to summarize your results. Does, does the summary reflect where most of the people fall, or is it influenced by these few people with very high values? Another diagram you could show is what is known as a cumulative distribution function. What we have here on the on the horizontal axis is this cumulative percent are the percentage of people whose blood pressure is a certain value or lower. So you notice what it says 50%. If you go across 50%, you'll see a point on this curve. If you drop it down to the horizontal axis, it would be about 140 or so. You could say about half the people had blood pressures less than 140. About 75% of them had blood pressures that were less than, say, 160. About 25% had blood pressures. We drop that down to about less than 130. So this also gives you an idea of how distributed the, um, the blood pressures are by telling you what percentage of people fall below a certain blood pressure. Uh, another useful graph, there are two of them on this figure. On the left-hand side is something called a stem and leaf plot. It's sort of like a histogram turned on its side. So the 
the y-axis, the horizontal, the uh, vertical axis here, are the different levels of blood pressures. The number of stars essentially is related to the number of people who have blood pressures at those various values or in ranges which are around those values. And you notice again that most of the people's blood pressures are in that 120 to 160 range, but there are a few people whose blood pressures are very, very high, above 200. There's even one person whose blood pressure is around 300. We also have next to it a count of how many people in each of those categories. So essentially, this is nothing different from the histogram that we saw in the first display. And the last picture here is something called a box and whisker plot. I'll talk more about that when I talk about numerical summary. But all these figures can be generated for you with any statistical package. And what you're looking at now is a slide that's based on an output from SAS. That's something we're going to be playing with at the end of this uh, of this of these uh, session. We'll be doing some analysis with SAS. But let me describe some of the numerical summary values. This is again part of a SAS printout. These are showing percentiles. It says that the minimum blood pressure, one person's blood pressure was 90. Maximum was a person's blood pressure was 300. The medium blood pressure was 142. That means if you take these 1,363 people and line them up in a line according to their blood pressures, and find the person who's in the middle of that line, 632nd person, I guess. His blood pressure or her blood pressure was 142. The 75th percentile, called Q3, be the person who 75% of the people have, are behind him or her in the line. They have blood pressures, blood pressures lower than him or her. 25% are above her in the line, or him in the line. Their blood pressure is above his or her blood pressure. Well, that person has a blood pressure of 160. That's what we mean by the 75th percentile. The 25th percentile is 130. You can also, in SAS, in any software package, calculate means, average blood pressure. You would get by adding up the 1,363 blood pressures and dividing by the number of people, 1,360 blood pressure of 147. Notice the mean is a little bit bigger than the median. That's typical when you have skewed data like this. Because if we go back, say, to the histogram, notice there are these people with very high blood pressures. They're going to have an effect when you calculate the average. When you add up everyone's blood pressure, High values that are atypical are going to have an effect on the value for the arithmetic mean. And that means the mean you observe in these 1,363 people is higher than the median, higher than the middle value, because it's affected by those extreme values. We also have in this SAS printout something called the variance, 773, something called the standard deviation, something called the interquartile range. These are measures of how spread about your data is how much variability there is in the 1,363 blood pressure numbers. The standard deviation, or the variance for us, well, this is the median. As I say, it's the sum of the values divided by n. Probably the most simple way to calculate an average, but it's influenced by extreme values. I describe the median as the value for the middle person in the line when you rank people. Funny to Amplify, go back to that listing of blood pressures, if the highest blood pressure wasn't 300 but was 350, it's going to affect your mean. If it doesn't affect the blood pressure of other people, the person in the middle of that line is going to be a person whose blood pressure is 142. So although the arithmetic mean is influenced by extreme values, the median will not be. Now in terms of measures of variation, a variance is a very common way in which people try to calculate how much variability there are in the 1,363 blood pressure numbers. What you do is you take each person's blood pressure, that's what X means, see how far they're away from the average blood pressure, the 147. You square that difference because some of these differences are going to be positive and some are going to be negative. So by squaring them, we make all of them squared numbers are positive. And we average those squared deviations by adding them up and dividing by N. But a variance is nothing more than the average squared deviation of each value from the mean. The problem is, if I go back to the two previous slides, variance was this number 773. The reason it's such a large number is because it's measured in squared blood pressure units. Because what we do when we calculate a median uh, variance is we take a blood pressure, subtract it from 
average of all the blood pressures in a number. You might be five millimeters of mercury above the average, but then we square that number to turn it into a 25. 